in Pelican Ridge every day, there's probably the same number of people doing 40 plus as there are doing 35. You know, um, Chief's here, should that be enforced more or should there be some consideration to raise the speed limit? Because I always learned about 35 out there on the little on the slow side. But I mean, there's 40, 45, 50 in my estimation daily. <clears throat> we looked at that, but I know they were improving the side of the road in Falconers towards Walmart. Is that what you're talking about? That same no, side? No, I, you know, for the last, I, I've lived in Sun City since January. I travel up and down Falcon Ridge almost every day. I do, I do 36. I set the cruise control on 36, right? There's people going by me, heading out to Conestoga. You know, it's like, is it a safety thing? They're doing 40 or 45, in my opinion. Not really. The speed limit's 35. I don't think so, since there's so many turns and different things, there's not a lot of intersections or turns on that actual drive, but that's something we can look at, you know. Like, you know that'd be 40, maybe 40. Yeah, then they'll just go 45. I was going to say. Yeah, you know, I don't know. It's just, well, it's three lanes on both sides unimpeded by we don't have an issue with it. There just wasn't that much traffic over the years out that direction until Sun City. So, but on the other side of that, we do get a lot of complaints too. Like you just said, people saying they're speeding or not stopping all the way and different things. So, and then when we put guys out there when they do have time, then the Sun City residents tend to complain, to be honest, that we're out there harassing old people. So, I just want to pass that on too. We'll be right up front. So, we can't win with that. I just want to be up front. Uh, one more thing by the microphone. We have Trunk or Treat tonight, 530 to 730 again, Rec Center in the northwest corner. Uh, everyone's invited, it's free, and we do it every we've done it for about ten years. It's a great program. Thanks, Chief. <coughs> by the way, I'm one of the old people who lives out in Sun City. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Please. Has the city heard anything back from the Attorney General's office about Mesquite Regional Business yet? Uh, to my knowledge, no. Uh, we're expecting well, it's about something. five days past the deadline for getting that uh, complaint back. Okay. Um, I will have to check. I, if something has come in in the last couple of days, I've, I've not been aware of it. So, uh, is, I didn't hear the question. I asked if the city had heard any information from the Attorney General's office on Mesquite Regional Business. An open meeting law complaint was filed against Mesquite Regional Business in the city um, over four months ago. And under the open meeting law, the Attorney General has 120 days to investigate and render a decision, and it is past the 120 day point. Um, I would imagine we'd be receiving something very soon. Uh, John? The comment on that same situation is I am aware that there is an open meeting law violation complaint filed with the Attorney General's office regarding Mesquite Regional Business. As I understand, I, I don't quite understand how that involves the city because as I understand, the complaint says this company ought to be abiding by the open meeting law or should it or shouldn't it. And it seems like that's between the Attorney General's Office and Mesquite Regional Business, and really, unless it's expanded into something more than an open meeting law complaint, that, that the, the issues between the Attorney General's Office and Mesquite Regional Business it really wouldn't involve the city. Is it? And John, actually, to be honest with you, I, I don't know enough about the nature of the complaint uh, or its status to even address that question intelligently, so I apologize. Uh, as soon as uh, I imagine, as soon as we get the, the uh, uh, disposition from uh, from the attorney general, uh, the attorney general's office, we will share it with everybody. Yeah, I I just kept wondering why the you know why the city attorney and the city council and people are are uh, you know involved in being defensive about it because to my knowledge the only complaint filed is the attorney general and Mesquite Regional Business that really doesn't. Either you're going to say, Mesquite Regional Business, you need to re follow the open meeting law, or you don't. But I, I, I just don't. Unless there's something we haven't been told about the the Attorney General's expanded its investigation or something, but 
I'm not aware of anything other than an open meeting law violation complaint against Michigan Regional Business. So, uh, right, and I don't know enough about the particular issue that to even address that topic. My no. Would any of your staff that. have any broader knowledge on this subject? Uh, probably the city attorney, but again, I think unless she has something that she's ready to disclose uh, and she's received from the attorney general's office, uh, until that happens, we there's not going to be any comment. So hopefully she'll have something soon, particularly since, as Barbara pointed out, we're past the 120-day deadline. Yes, sir, Mike. Last question, kind of getting off on the tangent here. Is there a contact within the city via the airport manager? Uh, I mean, is it within this group in here, or is it just in the office downtown? Uh, well, in terms of the airport manager, uh, uh, the person who's up with well, <clears throat> let me start over. Uh, the person who deals with it from our side of the equation is our public works director, Bill Tanner. Um, there is an airport manager, though, Larry. Let me. My question with regards to that, and I should be able to answer since I retired FAA. <laughs> I, when I left the job, I left the job. We've got a kid that flies around the neighborhood here in an ultralight, a powered ultralight. The rules are 500 feet above residential. He doesn't seem to comply with that. I've spent $50 for that brand new house up there. He spent 65 for his. I don't want it scratched by an ultralight that flames out over our house and can't land on the street or come down an artery in somebody's backyard. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a tail member off an airplane that doesn't have one. And, you know, I don't know if I'm going to come down and squeak to the city about something like that so they can run out and get a flashlight and a flag and tell this guy to do that. It doesn't work that way. So I didn't know if there was a way to come down and maybe contact with the city to get a hold of the airport manager to get this guy violated, which he won't like. Or, you know, maybe run out to the airport and wait for him to land. Or if he augers into somebody's backyard, go over and slap him. Well, you can always talk to me or talk to Bill Tanner. We'll touch base with, uh, with Larry and let him know what's going on. Uh, we've got somebody out there violating um, FAA, regula FAA regulations. Larry will probably be the person to uh, to do enforcement. So uh, either catch me after we're done here, uh, or I can have uh, I can have you talk to Bill Taylor. Okay. Anybody else? Any questions, concerns, observations? Barbara. Mm -hmm. one, more thing. one more thing about the police department that we sure. have here. Uh, as everyone knows, there was great opposition to using the uh, LDS mission people, kids to tear down the house. Uh, right up to the last day, there was opposition. They were subjecting them to danger and all these things. And so the negotiations were going on with these people. So now the day has come and we're about half finished. Uh, the, the people were talking about getting a restraining order from uh, uh, using the kids to do that thing. So all of a sudden, uh, uh, we're about half finished, and here comes the black and white. Here comes the police department with a cruiser. Put that cruiser right up against the work area. A police officer got out, and when he took her pants up like that, made me in business, went out and picked up two cans full of trash and put them in the bins. And then he continued to work there. In addition to that, the sergeant was on, on the red uh, little tractor there to put it in. That's good police work. That's good police work. St. Charles, that's good police work. Thank you very much. I take something else on that. Thank you, Don. Anybody else for uh, the mass of the comment or question? I've been to the billing department a couple times, extremely helpful. Uh, kudos to them. Uh, just simple questions and stuff. They took their time, answered everything, pulled drawings out. Be very, very helpful. That's good to hear. Yeah, that, that, that's music to my ears. Thank you. I'll pass it along to Richard Seacrest and uh, John Willis is, is second in command. So, thank you.